So after about six months of repacking, uh, upgrading, cleaning out, and basically making it a better bag, here is my long-term bug out bag. So I went to do this video about six months ago and tore this big bag apart and I've been busy building lots of other little bags and bags for friends, a bag for my wife, different, uh, different bug out bags, different systems. And I realized that this was my, you know, basically my larger bug out bag, my more long term bug out bag. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit on the camera. I'm just going to move the tripod so you can actually see it. Um, and it was filled with junk and unnecessary stuff. and. Stuff that I thought, hey, what a great idea. Let's toss that in the bug out bag, <laughs> you know? So a lot of uh, redundancy, a lot of useless stuff. Um, even some stuff that I found uh, to be just not needed, you know, more of a ridiculously, more of a ridiculous luxury item than something you'd need in a bug out situation. Now we're pretty much at our bug out location here. You know, we probably don't have much to run, to, run from in the middle of nowhere in the desert, but if we do, I have a whole inch kit, and I'm never coming home kit, that's basically labeled and in Rubbermaid tubs, and I'll do a video on that soon. Um, basically showing you, you know, how we'd set it up if we were never coming home again. But this would definitely be something I would grab with me. So I spent a minute of your time talking here. Let me get into the bag. I'm going to try and do this because this is a very large bag, so it's hard to get it all in the, in the frame. We're going to start off here. Now... This up top here, I keep a GPS in it. It's an older GPS, um, nothing too fancy. It's an older one, uh, but it will, it'll work. It still does, I test it. I also keep a compass, but that's later on. Roll of duct tape, you can never have enough. Uh, here we go. An SAS survival guide. Very handy little book. Um, I've actually read this back and forth tons of times, but you know, in an emergency, it's actually kind of a, thick book and it gives you something to read and you can look stuff up, whatever you need to do. I kept a few of these in here. These are MRE heaters. Um, I do have some MREs down in the bag and I also have a piece of tin foil if I need to cook anything in it. All right, what do we got? Outdoor survival guide. This was actually not supposed to be in here. It's supposed to be in my other bag. My bust. <laughs> All right. And instant coffee. And a little bit of cream and sugar. Yeah, it's a luxury item, but if I'm trying to stay awake, I'm going to need it. And I think that does it for in here. Wait, no. Well, no, just a piece of paper. So let me close that up. And we'll get on to the main compartment after I do the sides. I'm going to pull all the stuff to the side here. And it's funny, see? It's good to go through your bag because that other book was not even supposed to be in there. Okay. Make sure you got this in the, in the camera. This is my tool sack on this side. Okay, keep all the tools over here. First thing we got, a Glock knife. This will be upgraded. This is not a bushcraft knife, but you know what? It's, it keeps a pretty nice edge. I've used it out in the field a lot. Um, it works. It does what it's supposed to do. It's a full tang knife, uh, but I do want to upgrade to something a little better than this. I may even keep this in here just because it's a kind of handy knife to have. All right, now this guy. This is a small axe. Some of you know this is that Bear Grylls Gerber axe, okay? It's a smaller one. That's the main reason it got picked, not because it's Bear Grylls or Gerber or whatever. Or it's just a smaller axe. It fits in there good. I wrapped some paracord around the bottom. Let me get this out of here. So it's got a nice uh, sturdy handle. I didn't like the plastic on it. Um, I was looking for a small camp axe that wasn't something I'd have to strap to the side of the pack you know, long wise. This fits my hand, it's convenient, it comes very sharp. I've messed around a little bit, cut some firewood outside with it. It's got a nice little hammer edge here. All in all, I'm happy with it. Um, again, it is not, you know, it's not a $500 ax. It's not something that's gonna, you know, chop huge trees down in, in the bush, but if I need to do something with it or cut up some light firewood, it's ready to go. And the only reason I really chose that was because it fit the size I was looking for. Um, if I find something in that size, a different brand, maybe a higher quality, I'll buy it. 
Extra pocket knife. Uh, again, I always carry a pocket knife with me. These are Tack Edge assisted openers. Um, these are two for 20 bucks at the gun show. These are not going to be something, you know, they're China knives. But if I need a beater knife, I've got it. And I always keep my uh, Kershaw with me. So it's an extra. A small spade. These things can be garbage or they can be really good. I've actually tried this one out. It works. Um, you'll notice that I don't have the attachment in there because it was too big for the bag. Again, I'm going to be digging out huge entrenchments here. Um, I'm just going to be using this to maybe dig a trench around my camp, uh, dig a fire bed. You know, nothing huge, nothing major. Oh, well, on my knees doing it. It's also got a pick. I have not used the pick on it, so I can't vouch for the sturdiness of it. But, you know, it's decent. Again, something else in the future I'll probably upgrade. Uh, I know SOG has a nice tool that they just came out with a while back. Um, this is certainly not any kind of high quality tool, but it's, you know, one of the things that I wasn't able to upgrade before doing the video. And eventually I will. This guy here, Stanley. This guy's seen a lot of use outside. Um, I've used this in my backyard, cutting down branches, trees. Um, I also keep an extra blade, but uh, this one's the original. It's still going strong. These are great for cutting down branches, making quick firewood. Again, they're very minor bushcraft tools. Um, I am by no means a bushcrafter, but I am trying to learn some skills. And it's really interesting to me, actually. I've, I've been watching a lot of bushcraft videos lately. Uh, again, another freebie. Swiss Army knife. The biggest, most useless, useful thing on here, I think, is probably the toothpick. That's about it. <laughs> again, you know, I sharpened it up. I've taken care of it. Uh, it's there. It's another tool in the bag. Um, probably when I upgrade this knife here... I'm going to toss this because, again, it's extra weight. It may only be ounces, but it's extra weight. All right. I'm going to stick that stuff back in the bag. And a lot of these tools um, were tools I already had. And I really didn't have much in this bag in, in the way of tools. And that kind of stuff comes in handy when you're bugging out. You know, if you've got to stop somewhere and you've got to make a fire and all you've got is your pocket knife, you're in trouble. So let me toss this guy back in here. And again, you see why I chose the Gerber axe, it's small, it's convenient, it fits. You know, I didn't want something huge. Let's swing it around. The other side, make sure that's in the camera. Yeah, this is a big bag, so it's kind of hard to do it on my small little workbench here. Um, okay, cash and coins. Got about a hundred bucks in cash and some rolled up quarters. Yeah, there's not many pay phones anymore, but it assists you when you are paying with cash to have exact change, or at least close to it, so you don't lose a lot of money if they say, sorry, we don't have change. Flare gun! Yes, I painted it OD, uh, the olive drab, not olive drab, uh, desert tan. It's the same old Orion flare gun. I have a bunch of extra flares in here. Um, did I get this? Yeah, now you see them. <laughs> Gotta remember, the camera's a little bit lower than I am. Okay, plastic bags. Always use for these. Uh, Impromptu poncho, um, a tarp over your head when it's raining. Always a good use for it. My water purification kit. Got the Sawyer squeeze filter. <coughs> Did a video on that a while back. And I also have a life straw in here too. Uh, before this, I had, uh, gosh, it was one of those, I think it's Coleman, Coleman that makes it. And it was a paper water filter. Probably not the most efficient thing. I know that works. I've used it. It works well. And that's it for that bag. So I'm going to pack this back in here so we have more room because the main bag is pretty compartmentalized. That's another thing I did. Um, I had a lot of stuff floating around in the bag and it was hard to get at. And it was hard to get at in a hurry, you know. If I needed my first aid kit, it was buried at the bottom. Um, generally, if you're going to need your first aid kit, you're going to need it right away. So that's something you probably want to keep close to the top. Um, food, go all the way at the bottom and it stayed there. You know, I can't see myself dying for, you know, to, for food, but I can see myself dying for tourniquet. <laughs> okay. Here's the top. In here, we have a small tent. I forget the brand this is. I'm going to have to look that up and put it in the comments. Um, I have set it up. I haven't set it up outside, but it's nice and small. It's compact. It's a one-person um, tent, but both my wife and I fit in there fine. Uh, it's not, it's, it's, it's pretty big for a one person tent. We would fit in there fine. All right. 
get onto the top, top here. A couple of N95 masks. I've explained why I have these in the past. They come in handy when you really need them. Um, around construction sites, uh, who knows what, who knows what's getting sprayed, whatever you got. And a really good pair of work gloves. Um, I bought a bunch of these years ago and we still have them. And this is the one I threw in these, this bag, I think in 99, still have them in there. They work very well. We use them for gardening. We use them around the house. They really hold up well. SOL two person emergency bivy. I've only played with this. I just got it a couple days ago. Uh, I looked at smaller um, sleeping systems and God, I did not want to spend $500 on a sleeping bag at REI. This is, again, this is a bug out bag. This is for an emergency. This isn't for hiking or camping. Um, and this will do its job. It's, it's actually better made than you think. I thought it was going to be like that thin emergency blanket type of material. This is actually a pretty thick, heavy uh, material with zippers on it. So we've got shelter taken care of. Now we're going to move on to the compartmental sections. Extra socks, vacuum packed. First compartment. And I'm going to put this down here so you can actually see what the heck I'm doing. All right. This is another tube tent, some washcloths, an emergency blanket. I have another one in there. I have a couple more plastic bags, a rain poncho, um, and some fishing line. I don't want to pull it all out because I don't want to have to stuff it all back in there. And of course, about, I think it's 75 feet, 50 feet of power cord. There's that section right there. So that's right on top. If I'm setting up camp, I got my, my tent. I've got stuff to use with my tent. I keep the emergency blanket as a reflective surface to keep the heat in. Just put that on the ground below you if it's cold, although I live in the Nevada desert, so the chances of it being that cold are pretty slim. And I have my emergency bivy slash way to sleep. Okay, moving on. I always forget what I'm gonna say when I'm on camera. Emergency bivy slash, uh. <laughs> anyway, here's my radio. This is my communications pack. I did take the batteries out of this. I did a video on this recently. This is a, a single sideband shortwave AM FM uh, radio. This is from, uh, God, what's the name of that company? It's another thing I'll have to put at the bottom. But um, let's see if I can see it here. Basically they sell uh, government surplus items. But I've been really pleased with this. I actually used this for a couple months before I put it in the bag. I had a crank radio in here. And the problem with the crank radio is it had no batteries. Um, you had to crank it or you had to put it in the sun. Well, you know, I may not be in a situation where I can make that noise of cranking or put it out in the sunlight. And this works. It's got the extra antenna, batteries, the extended antenna. And I also have a set of earplugs in here. I mean, I'm pretty impervious to noise when I'm tired or sleeping, but you never know when that'll come in handy. So that's the radio part. And of course I'd be traveling with a handheld ham radio. Okay, what's next? First aid kit. This was one of my little custom first aid kits. I like to buy these in the stores and then upgrade them. So this has a lot more than it did when I first got it. And again, I'm gonna be real careful about opening it. Um, you know, I have my Israeli bandages. I have a, I have a uh, tourniquet in there. Well, I also have, this is an interesting way I do this. I store my over-the-counter stuff in a uh, prescription bottle and I use little cotton balls in between. So on the bottom you have a leave then you have Tylenol here and Benadryl here. And on the top you have ibuprofen. So I kind of know what's in what. And it's a small bag. It's easy to, easy to grab. This is something I picked up recently. These are Sudicon wipes. Why did I pick them up? Well, I've been watching a lot of the unrest going on in the country. And the biggest thing people face, whether they're involved in the protest and are wrong and got maced or just walking by the protest, is decontamination from whatever chemical agent the cops are using. Um, am I going to run into some crazy mace sprayer up in the hills of Nevada? Probably not. But it's good to have. This goes, on me, goes with me on trips, too. So if I'm in a big city, and I happen to get caught in the middle of a riot, you know, and through no fault of my own, get sprayed, there's something. Okay, let me zip this up and move on. I pretty much have everything in here that I have in the smaller bug out bag that I did. Um, 
you know, I've got my uh, quick clot. <clears throat> Israeli bandages, tourniquets, everything in that. Next pack. If you notice, that was fairly close to the top. This is... This is the thing that I was... As a matter of fact, this is... I was talking to Arm Rogue on uh, her channel the other day, and I wanted to show this. This is an Isbit Bun Stove. It's actually an antique. I picked it up in a secondhand store, gosh, a while back. You fold it open, and you drop one of these Esbit tabs. These are the military Esbit tabs. They tend to burn for about 10 minutes, and they burn really hot. Um, fold it open, open that tab up, light it. You're good to go. You got a little fire. I also have some wet fire in here and some fire making. This is my fire kit. I have some fire making stuff. I have a big hunk of magnesium here. Again, bought this at a gun show in California years ago. I scraped stuff off it. I've used it in the past. It works really good. I have some cotton balls with Vaseline, a little bit of Vaseline on some cotton itself. And I have my striker and my ferro rod down here at the bottom. So there's my, yeah, there's the magnesium ferro rod and the striker is right there. That's my fire kit. I looked up that stove last night and uh, I'm guessing 50s, 60s that was made. It, there's a lot of them that are worth some money because they're old German uh, World War World War II stoves, or World War I stoves. I doubt that's it, but it's kind of a neat little thing to have. Next pack, comfort pack. Lots of wet wipes. Got more paracord. Got uh, toilet paper in there. Open up. Okay, there we go. Got a can opener. And got all my stuff in there. A couple of bags, more paracord. Actually, that's shoelaces, but it can be used as paracord. Extra pair of reading glasses, because, yeah, I need reading glasses. Got a lighter. Got some Rolaids. Um, tissues, paper towels. Kind of a comfort items type thing. You would not believe the stuff I pulled out of this bag before. Um, we, uh, we have a timeshare in Vegas that we stay at sometimes. And they'll give you little spice packs. And I hit some of those in there. I'm thinking to myself, you're eating MREs on the run in a disaster. What the heck do you need, you know, cardamom and tamarind and all these other spices for? So, yeah, those got the boot. Uh, last thing. Food. In this black bag right here. Got lots of little snacks. By the way, if you ever tried these, these are MRE cookies. Oatmeal chocolate chip cookie. Oatmeal chocolate flavored cookies. These are actually really good. I have to hide these in my house because they disappear. And not from me eating them. <laughs> Fudge brownie snacks. And then we get to the main entrees underneath here. I have all of these are field stripped. They're just the entree. Again, I don't need sides. You know, I'm in an emergency situation. I need to eat quickly. Um, this one here is actually a cheese omelet with veggies. And I have a pretty wide variety in there. I've got some uh, meats. Some patties, you know, beef patties, stuff like that. And some bouillon cubes. Poorly labeled, but well, well sealed up. Some peanuts. And I have some, uh, I put about five or six of these in there, Propel. Um, it's got electrolytes. <laughs> now, these are actually really good for rehydrating um, when you're out. And I got a feeling if I was out walking around with this in the heat, I'd need some rehydration. I do not have a camelback on this. And this pack, that's something I'm considering. Move that out of the way. This pack is a pretty decent pack. It's made by Laxan. I think they're a German company. I knew nothing about buying decent packs when I bought this. Probably, oh, I want to say 99. I bought it at a gun show when I lived in California. Laxan, L-A-K-S-E-N. And I think I paid 120 bucks for it. And, I mean, it does its job. It's just not... It's not as sturdy as I like. I don't like the fact that it's more of a, a backpacking type of thing instead of a three-day pack where I can open up the top, you know. I'd much prefer if I could zip around here, open up my top, and put my items in like that instead of stuffing them in a bag. So probably I'm going to upgrade this bag down in the future. But as you can see, I mean, if you had seen this bag before, I would have gotten about 20 or 30 nasty comments below about, what the hell are you packing that for? What do you need that for? So yeah, I really took this bag down to a more comfortable level. So anyway, that's it. You know, uh, that's pretty much 
what I got going. Um, if you saw anything in this video that you'd like me to do a single review on or maybe show up close or show better, I can do that. You know, I've already gone 20 minutes, so I don't want to go into detail on every item. But I hope this gives you guys some ideas on what you can put in your bags. And again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, if you see anything that you've used that you didn't like that I have, leave them in the comments. Let me know. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon with some more videos.